Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Quality Management. This is Lecture A. Quality is an elusive but essential component and consideration in any project. This unit will cover quality management planning and key characteristics of quality assurance as well as its impact on project management. The lecture will focus on all three objectives. The objectives for quality management are to develop a quality management plan, perform quality assurance, apply quality tools. What is quality? There are many definitions of the term quality. This section will provide several definitions. Quality is the suitability of procedures, processes, and systems in relation to the strategic objectives. Quality is the ongoing process of building and sustaining relationship by assessing, anticipating, and fulfilling stated and implied needs. Wikipedia correctly states, quality in business, engineering, and manufacturing has a pragmatic interpretation as the non-inferiority or superiority of something. Quality is a perceptual, conditional, and somewhat subjective attribute and may be understood differently by different people. Consumers may focus on the specification quality of a product, service, or how it compares to competitors in the marketplace. Producers might measure the conformance quality or degree to which the product, service, was produced correctly. The Institute of Medicine defines six characteristics of high quality care. Care must be safe. Care must be effective and reliable. Care must be patient-centered. Care must be timely. Care must be efficient and care must be equitable. Many people and organizations are confused about the difference between quality assurance, QA, and quality control, QC. They are closely related, but they are different concepts. Quality assurance applies to a process. It is a set of activities designed to ensure that the development and or maintenance process is adequate to ensure a system will meet its objectives. Quality control applies to a product. It is a set of activities designed to evaluate a developed work product. The quality assurance system is used to monitor and develop the operations in a systematic way. A quality assurance system describes the operational starting points and processes, the operation-related matters to be monitored and evaluated, and the methods, procedures, and tools to be used in development activities. Your product is care of your patients. Controlling cost to the patient by designing the best system that you can is an example of quality control. Quality assurance is reviewing charts of patients for opportunities to change the system for the benefit of the patients and the organization. Total Quality Management, or TQM, is based on the buy-in and participation of an organization's members. Its goal is the long-term organization success through customer satisfaction. If properly implemented, TQM benefits all members of the organization and society in general. The TQM model on this slide provides an overview of key elements of TQM. Customers focus. TQM expands on the concept of customer to include suppliers, partners, and even coworkers. Planning process. Essential processes must be planned and mapped out before they can be managed and proved. Process management. Key processes are monitored and managed. Process improvement. Based on the constant attention to quality improvement processes are continuously refined and improved. Total participation. Buy-in from the entire company or organization is essential from top to bottom, from leadership to line workers. This section will provide an historical and theoretical basis for TQM. It further discusses leading TQM theorists and the tools they apply to create project quality management. Just as in any area of business, healthcare has to take into consideration customer satisfaction. If you have the choice between two hospitals, you will go to the one that you think gives the best care. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, grades hospitals. This information can be found on the internet by anyone. If your local hospital has a lower grade than the hospital 50 miles away, why not go to that one? Many hospitals now offer valet service for car parking, mix and match menu choices, and on-demand movies in the room just to increase customer satisfaction. 
Dr. W. Edwards Deming taught that by, quote, adopting appropriate principles of management, organizations can increase quality and simultaneously reduce costs. This is done by reducing waste, rework, staff attrition, and litigation, and at the same time increasing customer loyalty. The key is to practice continual improvement and think of manufacturing as a system, not as bits and pieces, end quote. McGrab, Gupta, McCluskey, and Sanborn, 2010. Deming advocated that all managers need to have what he called a system of profound knowledge, consisting of four parts and providing the foundation of his 14 points, which will be addressed on the next slide. The four key points of the system of profound knowledge are appreciation of a system. This involves understanding the overall processes involving suppliers, producers, and customers or recipients of goods and services. Knowledge of variation. This involves understanding the range and causes of variation in quality and the use of statistical sampling in measurements. Theory of knowledge. This refers to the concepts explaining knowledge and the limits of what can be known. Knowledge of psychology. This area refers to concepts of human nature and their importance in impacting quality. Deming, 2000. The system of profound knowledge is the basis for application of Deming's famous 14 points for management. Deming offered 14 key principles for management for transforming business effectiveness. The points were first presented in his book, Out of the Crisis. 1. Create constancy of purpose towards improvement. 2. Adopt the new philosophy. 3. Cease dependence on inspection. 4. Move towards a single supplier for any one item. 5. Improve constantly and forever. 6. Institute training on the job. 7. Institute leadership. 8. Drive out fear. 9. Break down barriers between departments. 10. Eliminate slogans. 11. Eliminate management by objectives. 12. Remove barriers to pride of workmanship. 13. Institute education and self-improvement. 14. The transformation is everyone's job. PDCA was made popular by Dr. W. Edwards Deming, who is considered by many to be the father of modern quality control. However, it was always referred to by him as the Schuhart cycle. Later in Deming's career, he modified PDCA to Plan, Do, Study, Act so as to better describe his recommendations. The Plan, Do, Check, Act, or PDCA model for performance improvement initiatives. This model provides a consistent problem-solving approach for all performance improvement activities. Only when effective quality planning, process design, performance measurement, and performance improvement activities are integrated does the organization's performance improvement initiative become integrated into the organization's culture. The key elements of the PDCA model are Plan. Establish the objectives and processes necessary to deliver results in accordance with the expected output. By making the expected output the focus, it differs from other techniques in that the completeness and accuracy of the specification is also part of the improvement. Do. Implement the new processes, often on a small scale, if possible. Check or study. Measure the new processes and compare the results against the expected results to ascertain any differences. Act. Analyze the differences to determine their cause. Each will be part of either one or more of the PDCA steps. Determine where to apply changes that will include improvement. When a pass through these four steps does not result in the need to improve, refine the scope to which PDCA is applied until there is a plan that involves improvement. You can also think of healthcare as a system, not just the bits and pieces. The admission process, the lab collection process, food selection and delivery process, and the discharge process are the bits and pieces of hospital stay. Together, with all the other bits and pieces, they create a hospital system. How can these bits and pieces work together and be improved to increase quality and reduce costs? Joseph Duran is widely credited for adding the human dimension to quality management. For him, human relations problems were the ones to isolate, 
Resistance to change, or in his terms, cultural resistance, was the root cause of quality issues. Compare Duran's 10 Steps to Quality Improvement to Deming's 14 Points for Business Survival and Prospering. 10 Steps to Quality Improvement Duran defines quality as fitness for use in terms of design, conformance, availability, safety, and field use. Thus, his concept more closely incorporates the viewpoint of customer. He is prepared to measure everything and relies on systems and problem-solving techniques. Unlike Deming, he focuses on top-down management and technical methods rather than worker pride and satisfaction. The following slide illustrates Duran's 10 steps to quality improvement. 1. Build awareness of opportunity to improve. 2. Set goals for improvement. 3. Organize to reach goals. 4. Provide training. 5. Carry out projects to solve problems. 6. Report progress. 7. Give recognition. 8. Communicate results. 9. Keep score. 10. Maintain momentum by make annual improvement part of the regular systems and processes of the company. The Pareto Principle states that completing 20% of a job provides 80% of the benefit to accomplishing all of the work. In applying this principle to quality improvement, we can say that 20% of reasons create 80% of the problems that occur on a project. Pareto analysis uses the Pareto Principle to identify a small number of activities that strongly impact the project as a whole. By employing this type of analysis, a project manager can address 80% of a project's roadblocks by isolating 20% of all reasons for the roadblocks and then applying such tools as the Ishikawa or cause and effect diagram to pinpoint the roadblock's origins. Joseph Duran, one of the fathers of the quality movement, restated the Pareto principle as the difference between the, quote, vital few and the trivial many, end quote. The Duran Trilogy provides a model of how an organization can better understand the relationship between processes that plan, control, and improve quality and produce better business results. Dr. Duran created this model in the 1950s. It defines managing for quality as three basic quality-oriented interrelated processes. Quality planning, the process for designing products, services, and processes to meet new breakthrough goals. Quality control, the process for meeting goals during operations. Quality improvement, the process for creating breakthroughs to unprecedented levels of performance. Created by the Motorola company in 1981, Six Sigma is now deployed in many areas of business as a quality management approach to enhance the value of results or deliverables. It isolates and eliminates the sources of problems while ensuring consistency in organizational processes through a number of quality management techniques. These techniques include statistical analyses performed by experts within the organization and a specific phased approach that focuses on goals identified by the client. Such goals can focus on such areas as financial, safety, or delivery time improvement. The term sigma defines the percentage of a process's error-free outcomes, so six sigma indicates a healthy process that should provide outcomes that are nearly 100% devoid of defect. Quality Management versus Total Quality Management It is important to understand the difference between quality management and total quality management. The list on this slide illustrates the differences. TQM includes both an empirical component associated with statistics and an explanatory component that is associated with management of both people and processes. The terms hard and soft are commonly used to represent these two components. TQM brought recognition to the fact that tasks can be categorized as value-adding or not. The obvious corollary is that non-value-adding tasks would be eliminated and the value-adding ones improved. Many process design and operation tools have been highlighted in TQM, such as statistical process control and the need for flexible organization. The main task that the quality control methodology sets out to accomplish is to ensure that only good items were acceptable for further production and bad parts were rejected.
To have the concept of good and bad parts means that standards of some type must be in place, so comparisons can be made. The fact that good and bad parts could exist was not the main concern, and is still not, of quality control. Any activity that is related to measuring product parameters against criteria and passing judgment on whether the product can be used or sold based on meeting the criteria is considered a quality control task. This covers final goods, intermediate work in progress, or services being delivered. Creating a quality culture. Quality culture includes quality improvement measures, as well as the individual and collective commitment to quality maintenance and improvement. Quality experts all agree that, in order for total quality management to be successfully implemented, the organization must have a quality culture. A quality culture helps us understand that a positive internal environment and the creation of delighted customers go together. It is a culture that naturally emphasizes continuous improvement of processes, one that results in a healthy workplace, satisfied customers, and a growing profitable company. A quality culture values fair play, and knowing this, we can understand that they will not do anything to deceive us in our dealings with them. In a business, employees will behave in ways that are consistent with the core values of the culture. Healthcare IT can support the quality culture and core values of the institution by providing to the user the information at the time it is needed, in the amount that it can be ingested, and in the place that it is needed most. An example of displaying information at the time it is needed and in the correct place in the workflow is in drug alert warnings. A warning that is displayed at the time of order entry is far better than a warning that displays after the prescriber has finished filling out all the required fields on the medication form. An example of the correct amount of information presented is who gets the warnings. Why should the chief of cardiology get a warning about a common drug interaction every time he or she opens the electronic patient chart? Showing that warning once a day could be enough to remind that provider about the interaction. A medical student with less experience may need those warnings more frequently. There are various components of an organizational culture that one must consider and understand. First, the business environment which could be a change-oriented culture, or a culture in which change is frowned upon. What are the organizational values? What does the organization consider to be important, and what is at its core? Who are the cultural role models in the organization? Who truly embodies and personifies the values of the organization? Each organization has a set of unwritten rules about how things are done. These are typically enforced by peer pressure, as opposed to an official company policy. And finally, what are the cultural transmitters in the organization? How are new employees indoctrinated into the unwritten rules about how things are done? All of these components make up an organization's culture. When discussing quality management, it is important to mention the standards that are used in quality management systems. ISO 9000, where ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization, is a group of standards developed and maintained by the ISO, but administered by various other certification and accreditation groups. Just as with any standard, they are not set in stone in perpetuity. There is a continual and ongoing need for modification and updating which the ISO undertakes on a routine basis. These standards are regularly published by ISO, which, in the case of Quality Management System Standards, is most currently instantiated in the publication of David Hoyle called ISO 9000, Quality Systems Handbook, published in 2009 by Elsevier. In this book, Hoyle discusses the changes that were instituted as the ISO 9000 was updated to current standard applicable to quality management systems, now known as ISO 9001, 2008 standard. The new requirements include a set of procedures that include all of the essential business processes, such as, quote, monitoring processes to ensure they are effective, keeping adequate records, checking output for defects with appropriate and corrective action where necessary, regularly reviewing individual processes and the quality system itself for effectiveness, and facilitating continual improvement." End quote. 
Applying the title of ISO 9001 certified, ISO 9001 registered can only be used by an organization or company if it has been independently audited by a certifying group to be in compliance with the standard. It is important to note that simply having the moniker of ISO 9001 certified does not imply that the end product is of high quality. It simply certifies that the agency adhered to the ISO standard. While ISO 9000 is not TQM and it does not directly refer to it, it is important to note the influence that TQM has had on ISO 9000. The latest iteration of ISO 9000 uses eight key principles which are directly relatable back to TQM. The key principles are customer focus, leadership, involvement of people, process approach, system approach, continual improvement, factual approach, mutually beneficial supplier relationships. The following requirements are all part of standard language from the ISO. Quote, in order to qualify for ISO 9000 registration, an organization must complete the following processes. Develop quality manual. Document procedures. Evidence of management commitment. Insurance that customer requirements are met. Accredited registrar audit. Internal audits. And periodic registrar audits. The standards for the ISO 9000 family deal with the following areas. Quality management systems, establishing and monitoring the process whereby product and service quality are maintained. Management responsibility, how the management establish, maintain, monitor, and communicate their commitment to the standards. Resource management, how the business provides the resources, both physical and human, to enable the standards to be met and maintained. Product Realization Requirements – How Businesses Establish and Monitor Quality from Concept to Final Product or Service Delivery Measurement Analysis and Improvement Requirements – How Businesses Use Data to Monitor Their Quality Control and How This Data is Used to Improve Quality Provision." End quote. This concludes Lecture A of Quality Management. In summary, we have discussed total quality management and the theorists behind TQM, the importance of a quality culture and approaches for creating a quality culture, and TQM and its relationship to the ISO 9000 family of certifications.